Hi, I'm Alex Sotmarie. I'm a mechanical engineer at Hexagon. I help students and professors put our software to work. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple uh, finite element model in Apex. This could be your very first finite element model. In this video, I'm going to take you through three steps. First, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple model. Second, I'll show you how to modify it. And third, I'll show you how to post-process the, the results to be able to look at them and interpret them. All right, let's go. Okay, so I'm in Apex. I'm going to the Education menu, and I'll click on Block. I can simply click the green check mark, and that will generate a model for me. After that, you simply have to click the yellow running person, and the analysis will start. Okay, great. The simulation completed successfully. For us to get a good look at this block and see what happens as a result of this model, we're going to click this button here, Make Post. We only do this the first time in a session, and that'll make it so that our post-processing view is like oriented the right way, color maps are set up nicely, that kind of thing. So I'll click Make Post and go to Post. Okay, so here's our block, and we can see that it is under 1 times 10 to the minus 2 megapascals of von Mises stress. Let's close post-processing and go to step two of this tutorial where I show you how to modify the block. So we're closing post-processing by clicking exit. Now we're back in the regular apex model view. Now we will modify the block. That's step two of the tutorial. So I'll go back to the block tool by clicking education, block. Any of these options here you can change to modify the model. So we can change it from steel to aluminum. We can change the height from 0.01 to 0.02, doubling the height of the block. We can change the force so that instead of 10, it's 20 times 10 to the third. And instead of the stress being a normal stress, it's a shear stress. So instead of being at the top and pulling up, uh, the force is gonna be at the top and pulling to the right. Let's click the check mark to make these changes active. We see that the block is now twice as tall. I can click the left and right mouse buttons together and that'll resume things for me. Let's rerun the model now. Okay, and we'll go back to post-processing. We'll just use the regular post-process button this time. Now we're back in post. Let's click the left and right mouse buttons together so that we can resume the block. It looks like it's undergone a lot of deformation. It's a pretty wild parallelogram shape now, but that's not really the truth of what's happening. Well, we can turn deformation off totally by clicking this button, but let's turn it back on again. We can click this tab down here, and we can change the amount of scaling that we have. So if we have true scaling like that, the block is only deforming by the amount that it would in real life, which is so small you can't see it. Let's go back to relative scaling. We can tone this down a little bit, and that makes it a little bit more realistic. There. That value looks good to me. We can also look at different kinds of results with this, not just the stress that I had pre-programmed. Let's open up this stress menu by clicking Expand Collapse. Okay, so now we can modify this fringe plot. We can look at different types of stress, like we can see that the X direction stress is actually zero. This looks very colorful, but if we look at the color bar here, all the values range from minus one times 10 to the minus 14 up to like about 10 to the minus 14 on the other side. This runs to zero. We could look at the Y component, all very similarly small. Let's check out the XY component. So that's a shear stress in the XY plane. Ah, so we see that we've got a stress here of two times 10 to the minus two. This is what you would get from a textbook calculation. We can look at things other than stress. Let's look at deflection. So we'll click on displacements translational. By default, Apex will show us what is the total displacement at any given point in this object. Uh, it might be more helpful for us to, for example, look at just the Y component of that displacement. And we see that this block and shear is not having any particles going up or down. Now let's click on the X component. We see that we have a higher degree of displacement at the top of the block. At the bottom, it's exactly zero because in the model, the bottom of the block is constrained to be flat on the ground, not sliding at all. Let's go back to stress. This will be a good opportunity for us to learn to use the probe tool to inspect stress within parts. So I've gone back to stress. 
you click on the magnifying glass probe tool icon. I need to move my fringe plot window a little here. I'll click on fringe here and that will tell the probe tool to actually display numbers based on what I've plotted on the fringe plot. So here I clicked on it. That first number is the ID number for that node and 0.03 is the stress value there. If I hover over a node, Apex will just show me for a moment what the number is at that point. So again, 0.03 uh, megapascals. Okay, so that I think is enough post-processing to get you started modeling and analyzing results in Apex. Okay, great. So you have just learned how to model your very first model with finite element analysis in MSC Apex. Um, I want you to check the description. There are going to be some helpful resources there for you, such as links to be able to download our software for free and check it out. Um, if you are using a version of Apex that comes before 2023.3, you'll need to contact me to get access to the custom tool that I used in this video to model the block. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments. If you're an instructor, please get in touch with me if you want help. For example, I have classroom resources that go along with this video, uh, along with other tutorials and so on for doing solid mechanics with Apex. Uh, if you're interested in other ways of teaching using engineering simulation, also get in touch. I'd like to help you out with that. All right. Thanks. See ya.